Are you feeling like it's almost impossible to stand out on Instagram right now? We all hear gear doesn't matter, but could this lens actually give you a look that no one else has? I think one of the hardest things to do in any artistic field is create your own style, something that makes your work stand out and be recognized. For me, the love I have for films, not film stock, but actual movies, was a driving factor in me buying my first camera and taking photos. And I desperately wanted my photos to look like scenes from those movies I loved. Blade Runner, Alien, and I've been shooting nearly every day since, so just about three years. And even though I can honestly say some of my work is good, it does not have that look that I was going for, which is honestly kind of disappointing. And I've watched a ton of videos on YouTube on how to achieve a more cinematic look. And although they were very good videos, great instructionals, and it did help me, it still wasn't quite the same. And then it dawned on me that maybe the lens I'm using to take these photos don't have the same cinematic properties and qualities that the lenses that they're actually using on these movies. And movies like Alien, Blade Runner, and The Hateful Eight, they were all shot on an anamorphic lens. And I knew this, but anamorphic lenses are typically huge. And more importantly, crazy expensive. Sweet Jesus, are they expensive. And for these two factors, it's why I never really considered using one for photography. If you search anamorphic photography on YouTube, you're going to find very few videos on the subject. And I think it was this lack of saturation that I thought, this could be something. But like I said before, finding an easy, small, and more importantly, cheap solution was a necessity. I mostly do travel and street photography and the prospect of carrying around a massive lens just wasn't going to work with my workflow and I didn't have 12 grand to drop on a lens either. The only solution was from a brand called Sure, and maybe you've heard of them by now. They kind of made their name making tripods. They make some great tripods. But about a year ago, they exploded because they made a set of very affordable entry-level anamorphic lenses for a variety of mounts. I ended up grabbing the 35 and the 75 for the Micro Four Thirds mount. But, and this is a big but, the camera that had that mount was this. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. It's a cinema camera and the look it produces has a very filmic feel. And for the money, you'd be hard pressed to find a better image. However, it's a cinema camera. It's not meant to take photos. It can, but it doesn't make it easy to do so. But despite the tedious workflow and the horrible ergonomics, the images that this combo produces is amazing. I remember posting some of those initial images I took with the 4K and the Sure anamorphic lenses. And I remember a bigger YouTuber that I follow and I respect actually reached out and was like, what are you shooting these on? And I told him, I was like the 4K with an anamorphic lens. And his response was, like I said, as pretty as the images are, the workflow is not easy for this camera. It does not shoot JPEGs. You can't review an image in camera. The only time you can do so is when you get home and actually import the images. They're only eight megapixels, they're DNG RAWs. So you actually have to de-squeeze them in Photoshop first then I send them, airdrop them to my phone, and then I can mess around with those in Lightroom. I had just really wished that there was an option that I could use on my Canon R5 because that is an incredible photo camera. And there wasn't an option for that camera 
until just recently. This is the 50 millimeter full frame 2.9 anamorphic lens from Sure with a 1.6 squeeze factor. This lens is really solidly made. It has an all metal construction with an exception for the glass elements, of course. And it's a pretty beefy lens. It comes in at 2.368 pounds. The aperture ring has a good amount of resistance to it. It's super smooth, so is the focus ring. However, the focus ring doesn't have enough resistance for my liking, but that's, you know, subjective but it's also not horrible. Now, most anamorphic lenses uh, are known for being quite soft, like that's a property. However, even at T2.9, this lens is incredibly sharp for an anamorphic. It also has an 82 millimeter filter thread on the front, which is pretty cool. You can you know, put a mist filter on there and give some of your photos an even more cosmic look. Now the workflow and ergonomics are far better than the Blackmagic, but it still does have its quirks. The biggest issue is probably the fact that it doesn't have an anamorphic mode. So there's no way to de-squeeze. So composition of your photos uh, does take a little getting used to. Now this is a characteristic of anamorphics and not the R5, but anamorphic lenses have a greater magnification at the center. And so the depth of field is a little different and hitting focus with an anamorphic lens I've found to be more difficult than a spherical lens. The focus peaking on both the Blackmagic and the R5 aren't as accurate as they could be. So I mapped a zoom button uh, next to the shutter so that when I do need to hit focus, I can hit that twice, punch in quite far and get critical focus. But again, I think the work is totally worth it. The characteristics of this lens are so enjoyable. I love this widescreen look, this widescreen aspect ratio. I love the softness. I know I mentioned that it's super sharp, but I actually prefer it to be a little more soft like a movie. I love the distortion towards the edges of the framing, the vignetting you get on some of the photos. I love the character of this lens. Honestly, I think it is so much fun walking around with this lens, taking photos, and the images you get straight out of camera really do look like scenes from a movie. And the more I shoot with it, the more I love it. Now in 2021, including this lens, I bought 15 lenses and this is the only lens I wouldn't sell. And that's because it gives a look that is completely unique amongst all my other lenses. And I think that's a look that really is going to make you stand out amongst the millions of photographers on Instagram. I think it's kind of bonkers that I can take an image and it makes me feel like I'm a part of those big screen movies that I desperately wanted to be a part of. Suray, thank you so much for making this lens. It has been so much fun and I am so excited for the other lenses in the set that are coming, especially that 35. I would definitely recommend you grabbing one of these. They're so much fun, whether you're shooting video or photos. I think this lens is going to be my favorite lens for a very long time. Until the next one, I'll catch you later. Peace.